Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this acrylic painting of some pool balls for a friend. Now I'm working on an, uh, I think it's 11 by 14 canvas panel, and I'm using this little compass. I love this thing. It is uh, one of the flat compasses by, I think it's um, the Safety Ruler Company. Anyway, I picked it up on Amazon, and you can now purchase these individually, but at the time I got them, you had to buy a pack of 10 or 12. It was a big box of them, but you know what? I find it so handy because I will put these in any of my sketching bags. I have one on every desk. I've given a couple away to friends. So I, you know what? It's great for, you know, sticking in the travel bags. It doesn't, you know, poke a hole in anything like a traditional compass. I really, really love these. And I think I paid like, I don't know, 10 or 11 bucks for 10 of them. So you can buy one for like six bucks now on Amazon, but I would highly recommend maybe getting the multi-pack and, you know, having one for all your uh, crafty bags. So I used them to draw my circles. And the thing I really liked about that is that I could have bigger ones towards the bottom of the canvas and smaller ones and have them getting slightly small, uh, smaller as they go up the canvas because the things closer to the bottom of this canvas are gonna be closer to the viewer and in a closer field of depth. And then as they get further up the canvas, they're actually like more across the pool table and they would be a little bit smaller because of perspective. Things that are closer to your eyes, even if they're the same size, will appear larger than things further away from your eyes. And that just helps give you a little bit of depth in a small, I guess you'd consider this a still life scene. So I'm starting off with uh, just some acrylic paints here. I'm using the Golden Open Acrylics, and the reason I'm using those is because I just personally prefer painting with them. I find it more enjoyable because it's a lot more like painting with oil paints. The downside to these paints when you are painting and filming is that, that you do get a certain amount of glare to it. Whatever they've put in there to make the paint stay wet or longer, whatever the retardant is, it just keeps the, um, it makes the paints a little glossier while you're working with them. So just something to keep in mind. I did find a paint that, act, that acted very similarly. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to find in the United States, but if you do happen to come across it, it's called Aquela, and it's by the Japanese company, company Kusakabe, and that has more of a matte finish. It's actually an alkyd resin, and uh, I do recommend that, if you, especially if you want to not have glare when you're painting. But unfortunately, I can't find a supplier in the United States that sells it, and I'm getting really close to being out of white. So if anybody knows where I can buy a single tube of white Aquela paint, please let me know. But for now, I'm really loving the Golden Open Acrylics. Um, they are, I've bought a few open stock tubes. I started I started off buying a couple tubes that they no longer sell, or a couple sets they no longer sell rather. There was a modern set of six and the traditional set of six. And then um, I started with the modern because I'm like, I'm just going to start with one set and see what I think. And I was, I think I paid like $16 at AC More because I bought it with a coupon. It was regular, I think like 30. I really liked it. So then I ordered the traditional set. And um, I like that too. And I've purchased an uh, open stock tube of burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and another one of white just to make sure I didn't, um, I didn't run out because the whites will get used up before all the other colors in the sets, just like anything, just like with my Aquila paint that I was talking about. So my, would, my recommendation would be if you are going to buy any of the, of the uh, golden open sets, buy an extra tube of white. And honestly, that would be my recommendation if you're buying any sort of set of paints that's like an acrylic or oil or gouache is get that extra tube of white because you'll go through it and it will make the set last a lot longer. Otherwise, you can always buy open stock and just buy a larger tube of white and smaller tubes of the other colors. Now, because the um, the golden open paints do stay wetter longer, I can go through with a fan brush and I can blend out the felt on the pool table here. Now, do you see how I like kind of filled in? I'm not worried about getting some color on the pool balls, but I really don't want to fill in the pool balls for a couple reasons. For one, I don't want to lose my lines. And for another, I don't want to have to fight when I go to paint over them. Um, I'm doing this kind of in an a la prima style, meaning all at once. So if I had just painted everything green and then gone right in with another, with the, with the next color for the pool balls, they would just mix up and get muddy. If I was using a traditional acrylic paint, um, it would be dry and I could just go over it. However, acrylic paints aren't always opaque. It just depends on the pigment, just like with watercolors. Some pigments are more transparent, some are more opaque. So even if I had, um, say I want to paint a red or a yellow pool ball and I had green behind it, it would be really difficult to have those colors stand up. I would have to repaint the balls white and then let it dry and then paint again. So that's why I try to avoid getting too much paint on the pool balls, but I did want to get the background somewhat blended. So I did allow uh, some of the green to kind of overlap my drawing 
just to make sure I didn't have a halo or a gap of unpainted canvas around the balls. Um, I'm just kind of uh, having a good time with this painting. Like I said, I was painting it for a friend and I wanted to come out well, obviously, because I'm painting it for a friend, but I also wanted to have a good time. And um, yeah, I'm just, uh, just kind of going for it. And I really enjoyed the process and I enjoyed how the painting came out. I wanted just that little hint of action in the still life so it wouldn't be quite so still. So I wanted to have a pool cue in here going after the, um, uh, the white ball there, which generally if you've ever played pool, um, please excuse my no makeup uh, hobo hair there. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, you hit the white ball and you, and you use the white ball to hit another ball to hit into the pocket. So in case somebody hasn't played pool out there, they don't know. And usually the white ball has a little red spot on it. And that's just to kind of help you aim up where you're going to, what part of the ball you're going to hit, depending on how you want it to roll and how you want it to spin and whatnot. I used to have a pool table um, many years ago. I bought one for my husband for his birthday. I think it was when we first bought the house, but it eventually just, it wasn't a very expensive one. Eventually it just kind of started to fall apart in the in the damp basement. But, um, but I always enjoyed playing and uh, never was really great at it, but I, it just, you don't have to be great at things to enjoy them. That's another tip for, for art or life in general. You do not have to be good at something in order to enjoy it. You can be terrible at it and still enjoy it. Do you sing in the shower? That's fun. Are you a good singer? I don't know if you're a good singer, but even if you're a bad singer, it's still fun to sing in the shower, no matter how well you sing. So keep that in mind. You don't have to be good at something to enjoy it. And who is to say if you're good or not? That is a matter of... Um, of opinion. That's a matter of preference. Everybody has, uh, has a song to sing. Everybody has a light to shine. So shine it and have fun and enjoy yourself. Uh, so yeah, I'm just basically working around the painting, filling in the colors of the pool balls. I hadn't quite decided exactly what I wanted to do, but I did want to make sure I wanted to kind of push the depth in the painting. So by adding my warmer colors towards the bottom of the um, of the canvas on those larger balls that I knew it was going to give me a little bit more depth because warm colors advance and cool colors recede. So having a yellow and a red ball right close to the bottom of the canvas, that's going to help that feel closer to the viewer as well as um, is just kind of um, this kind of look good. Plus red's my favorite color, so I love to get red in there somewhere dominant. Um, but I just knew that was going to help the depth. And on balls where I knew I was going to have a stripe, I needed to get that white in there first and almost kind of build the sphere. And then I could add the stripe of color on top of that. And my uh, my advice when you're doing something and you need to make like, say, a natural gray, if you look at that white ball in the background, you'll see there is some uh, some gray tone in there. What I generally will do is I will see whatever color I'm using and I would add its opposite to it. So. Um, if I had purple and I wanted to make that more muted or I wanted to gray it down, I could add some yellow or yellow ochre or maybe even a brown, which is almost like a desaturated yellow or orange. I could use that to make a darker, uh, make like a desaturated shadow color. So keep that in mind. When you need to shadow something, look at the color and add its opposite. And that will often give you a really natural looking shadow. Uh, and it's okay to have some of that green on the white as well because the color is going to reflect up onto the ball. So the pool balls are shiny. They're like a glossy resin, I guess. Um, so not only are they going to reflect highlights, they're also going to reflect color. So they will reflect some of that green. So it's perfectly fine to have some green on the white parts of those balls or even the, the yellow ball uh, as well as having some shadow. So just keep kind of keep that in mind. Um, a lot of the shadows I'll also do by mixing my, I think I was using Van Dyke Brown. I think I might have had some Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Sienna, but either of those browns mixed with blue will give me a nice black color. And that is also perfectly suitable to use for my shadows because I am using that in the painting. So it does make sense. Now putting it on the green, it does help too. I can add some shadows under the balls in the green with that color. I could also do green plus red. That would give me a more translucent shadow because the green, the viridian green, or th it's actually phthalo green plus a pyrrole red, or especially if I used like a rose red, which is very, very translucent, that's going to give me almost like a glaze type of shadow because it's going to be so translucent. So it just really depends on what you're what you're looking for. The thing with the really transparent colors I found with the Golden Open acrylics is that those really transparent colors are going to be shinier. And I just think it's because it doesn't have that the the body of like an opaque pigment in there kind of um 
uh, filling it a little bit. So it just it's just very shiny if you're using two transparent colors. Now I forgot to turn my camera back on. Basically, I drew a little cube on the bottom of the canvas to be a little cube of chalk. I felt like I needed a contrast in shapes because I had so much repetition with the circles. And I have like one, the line of the pool cue and the line of the sides of the pool table, but I felt like I needed another shape to add a little interest. And the cube is perfect. Plus then I can get that chalk in there and have just another element that helps sell the fact that this is uh, pool balls on a pool table and not, I don't know, planets floating in the solar system or just random balls somewhere. It helps add a little context to the painting. And, um, and I think that worked out pretty well. And I wanted to brighten up that yellow ball. So I'm using some, I believe this is Hansi Yellow Opaque and some white, just to kind of glaze over what I already have and just really pop up the color. And I decided to do a yellow stripe on this ball to keep, again, those warm colors towards the front. Or actually, I think I want more of an orange here. Now, I couldn't remember what colors were on what balls. So um, I did I did pull up an image. I think it was from like an Amazon sales page just to see what numbers I should have on the balls, which we'll get to painting in a little bit. But then it occurred to me, I still, I kept the pool balls from my pool table and the like the triangle rack. So I actually still have those in my hoard. You know, isn't it funny how we keep some things for sentimental purposes? I, I think I probably kept them thinking that I would use them in a still life. Did I use them in the still life? No, I decided to work for my imagination and a few reference photos that I found on Unsplash just to kind of see what the, you know, what the shading would look like and whatnot. But um, I could have just taken a piece of green craft felt that I had and put my own pool balls on there, but I didn't even think of it. Oh my goodness, it's so sad. You hang on to these things, you hoard them, and then it's when it comes time where you had actually used them, you completely forget you own them. Maybe I'll have to do like um, a cute display or something. I, I struggle with what to decorate my mantle with in my living room. Like I'll do Christmas from like November. Well, I'll do like fall, and then I'll cross it over to like Christmas and holidays. And then it's like, I don't have many ideas until we get to like the Easter season where I'm doing like like ceramic bunnies and flowers and things like that so it's like there's many times where I could do a still life with like random I could do a still life of game things like you know pool balls and poker chips and I don't know I guess that probably sounds super sketchy <laughs> but I think it would be kind of a fun display especially if I could find like vintage games I think that would be a really cool display to do on the mantle I'll have to put that on my punch list of things to try that I'll probably forget about. I have so many lists on my phone, you guys. It's not even funny. Yeah, I should probably, maybe I put that on a list in the past. I have no idea. But anyways, uh, because the, um, I find the golden opaque, open acrylics, at least the colors I have, a lot of them to be very transparent. I did have to build up some of my colors a bit to keep them, to make them a little more solid. I wasn't happy with how solid they were or how solid they weren't, I should say. Uh, so I did go and build up the colors. And then I was kind of like, you know, I'm going to overwork this if I don't, uh, if I don't watch it. So I decided that I would just start going in and throwing in some highlights and just seeing how much more do I need to add to this to, you know, make it feel, um, feel done, you know, uh, little highlights. I love the highlight phase, but I find that when I start adding highlights, then we're getting close to the end because I don't like to really work back too much after the highlights because things can get kind of muddy. And also I just kind of wanted to keep it pretty basic. I did, um, I just kind of squig squiggled in, squiggled, scribbled in some de details on the wrapper on the chalk just to make it look like it's not just a cube. And um, I don't know, you know what? I should have used my acrylic paint pens on this, or am I? I oh, I guess I am. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, I should have let this dry a little bit more, honestly, because I'm struggling to use an acrylic paint pen to write the numbers on here. But that would have been ideal if I let it dry completely, then I could use the acrylic paint pens. But nah, so I switched over to a liner brush because I'm like, ah, I can't. I, I, my pens keep getting mucked up in the previous layers of paint because the open acrylics do not, they dry... They take a couple of days to fully cure. So if you want to go over, you have to, you kind of risk lifting up. So it's great if you want to paint Alla Prima like an oil painting, but if you're going to take a couple of days, you might have to leave a little more drying time than you anticipate. But this is pretty much how it ended up. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And my friend really loved the painting. So that was really the, the whole goal. And uh, the important thing about this artwork is that my friend loved it. Um, and it was fun to paint. So uh, remember, do what you love, have fun doing it. And don't let anybody say, you know, don't let anyone stop you from doing what you love, I guess. That's the end of the story. Uh, I hope you had a good time watching this today. Thank you so much. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.